right. I think that should work. <coughs> can anyone confirm that my voice is working and that you can see my screen? <coughs> yes, I was sick, iconic. But even when I'm sick, I can sit and listen, <laughs> at least to a human. No one's asking you to lift the planet after all. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon for everyone who is not in the States, obviously. We got Marcellus Wallace in here. That's insane. All right, let me, let me open trading view. Make sure that this is cleared out. And then I'll start tagging off questions. Yes, I did. Iconic. What are you going to do about it? Marcellus Wallace. Okay. Um, let me see. I think I missed... Uh, Faisal, your your question is. Uh, um, I mean, if if you want a strategy that has a seventy percent win rate, then you'll just have to pick a strategy, and you're gonna have to back test and figure that out, right? Like, uh, nothing's gonna do the same for you as it will for anyone else, and any strategy that has a X percentage of win rate will obviously vary in win rate uh, across people, but also across market conditions. So it's really just. Um, it's a super open-ended thing. I can't really answer that question. Wait a minute. Kiko is a man. Yes. Are we going to have a weekly recap? If you guys want, yeah, sure. I can do that. Uh, let me just get to the questions. Uh, in T-Trade's daily profile video, he focuses on the 15, but sometimes drops to 5. Why in one drop? Um, the logic behind that is when you're establishing a uh, daily profile. Let's see if I can find a decent day. Um, anyways, when you're establishing a daily profile, the 15 minute is sort of the nicest time frame or the best time frame to uh, line up the, the profile, the, the sessions, and also the day's movement, as well as the PD arrays that are going to be relevant into trading that day. And so when T is outlining the daily profiles, the 15 minute becomes the clearest for that. When will he drop to five? Uh, the five minute is then going to be used when it comes down to the logic of uh, framing a lower time frame move such as this right here. So right here we've got ourselves a New York reversal profile, right? We've got um, Asia making a high here. We had SMT on these highs with ES. We do drop down lower into New York, sweep out this sell side liquidity. And then from there on out, obviously the five minute gives us the confirmation that we're looking to trade into the upside. And that's your New York reversal profile. So in those scenarios, you want to be referencing the five or maybe even the three minute um, to get a clearer glance at that profile as it won't be fully visible on the 15 minute chart. Cool. All right, let me see what's going on over here. Scroll up a bit in this chat, make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, cool, I didn't. In fractal model, if price cross Friday high and Monday, can I take the trade in Monday hourly time frame? Um, I'm not permitted to disclose any information regarding the fractal or foundation model. So um, you're gonna have to ask T about that if he's open to answering because those models are a part of the, uh, the lens. Uh, there we go. Uh, please do weekly recap. Okay, sure, I'll do that. Will you ever be on the one minute? I used to trade on the one minute. Right now, I don't really much, no, not at all, actually. So um, that'll be something for, for another lifetime. Uh, how many trades do you take in a week? Probably one, sometimes it gets to two, um, but the majority of the time it'll be one. Do you personally ever trade in ranges like one minute scalping the 930 onwards expansion reversal? Um, no, it's not, it's not within my model. It doesn't really suit my style of trading. Uh, it used to be something that I engaged, but, uh, even now, not even for sport, would I do that on a paper account or whatnot? I simply just stick to what I'm following. Okay. I think I'll go over the weekly recap, um, because it should be sort of short and, uh, painless. And then I'll get into some of the other questions. If you questions haven't been answered yet don't send them again make sure you keep the chat clean so i can reference them after again so weekly review obviously we're going to be looking at the nasdaq we're not too concerned with any other assets um monday started in an accumulation it was a very very boring day not much happening we ended up seeing the drive lower um into some sell side 
at 2 p.m. on the Powell news driver. And then we had a massive expansion on ES here, if I could show you that, um, which led to us uh, taking out the Friday highs. From there on out, we swept out Friday's highs. That makes an SMT. Um, there was a logic to trade this lower, I believe. I was personally looking for higher prices Tuesday. It did not fit within my um, understanding, at least, to trade away from a Monday reversal. And then we had some sketchy news uh, regarding war. And so this is what many say was the catalyst to this expansive downside move. Now, I'm still an advocate of the market does what it's going to do regardless, and news will just accelerate it. But um, this is the sort of situation where it's a bit more unexpected and you can't really play around with it as you usually would be able to. We had the same thing on CL right here. So crude oil was at what trading at $66 to the barrel, whatever. And we've made it all the way up to 75 within the week due to those news on uh, on war. And so that's something that sort of foiled the plans. Um, next thing obviously that comes up is coming from a Tuesday high of the week. Um, we're initially looking to frame the downside. Uh, but what happens is that we come off this low, create this range, and then the market obviously is defined by this range high to this range low. Um, that's what set the stage for <clears throat> the long setup on Wednesday, which is a trade I personally took and was looking out for, where now that we're trading inside of a range, in order for the market to expand lower, we'd want to see it sweep out this high. And in order for the market to expand higher, we'd want to see it sweep out this low. And so whether I were trading a continuation or a intraweek reversal being Wednesday, which is a decent day for a midweek reversal, um, we'd want to see one side of this range swept. Obviously, we came down, touched into previous day's low. We had an SMT with ES there. And then the NASDAQ set up the structure to trade into the range high upside right there. Then that set the stage for the following day, which is we maintained our range. Let me see if I can make this a bit more clear. Right, we now have a new buy side objective right above this high. There's no structure that confirms downside here. And so as long as that's the case, previous day's high always becomes the next most likely draw. Obviously Thursday is the day before non-farm payroll. We're not expecting much on this day. Pretty decent setup that I saw that I think some people took, but I was personally not interested in, was obviously the uh, expansion here. We get a closure above this down closed candle. We've got a, one second, here we go. We've got a swing formation right there. And so um, as a follow up to that move, you could be buying the open on this candle, trading it up into this high with your stop below this low. And after that, obviously, you just went into a consolidation. It reverted the entire upside move here. I think the one minute had a decent sell model that maybe people could have capitalized on. Let me see what that was about. Okay, not too clean, but um, obviously we had an SMT with ES at the lows here. It was quite heavy into the uh, close. It wasn't really doing much. And then Friday, non-farm payroll. Um, the logic that I was expecting personally was that We've traded um, off of a Tuesday high of the week. Uh, it's our current high of the week, and it's Friday with non-farm payroll. And I'd want to see non-farm payroll expand higher, close inside, and then we'd revert into the downside, which is these failure swings that I'm looking for, right? Because the, the weekly logic remains Tuesday is the high of the week, and therefore I'm not interested in looking for a trade uh, into this direction. Now, non-farm payroll quite quickly invalidated it for me personally. Um, the strong close above these highs, the fact that it didn't sweep and come back inside was not a great sign. I ended up giving it the benefit of the doubt because of how strong we broke down later on in the session. Uh, and I expected that this right here could provide a framework for the downside. But obviously at this point, we had expanded way too far above the open. And it was just not logical anymore to see us drop from 2063 to 1918. That's a good, what is it, 245 handles, I believe. Let me see if my math is right. Yeah, 245.5 handles it was. So um, that invalidated that. And obviously this week was just a big mess. I mean, if you check out um, where's our weekly opening price, could locate you right there. 
So this is where the week opened, right at this candle, and this is where the week closed. We had minimal expansion above or below the weekly opening. Um, we had no sustained runs, no clear price directives. The only thing you could have really worked with here was, I guess, a scalp logic. I'm not sure if it's ruined by this setup, because honestly, um, after the Monday reversal, in my mind, I would have immediately went to the Tuesday expansion logic, framing this high as the target. But um, from there on out, it just became a big mess. Being that it's the first week of the month, and that elections are really tight around the corner, I'm guessing this is just how it's going to have to be. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you can say for that. If we check out the weekly candle, that's about as indecisive a candle as it gets. Obviously swept into these old lows below here. Almost closed this gap. Um, traded into this weekly down close candle. And preferably we'd want to see more upside off of that, but totally undecisive week. Not much action for my liking, at least. Let me see now if I'm not missing questions. Can anyone explain what the fractal model is? The fractal model is T-Trade's, uh, his own model. He he created it and it's available if you join Lens, which is T-Trade's and AN's group. Sir, how do you scale in a position in expansion? Um, you want to be, let me see. If you're trading, okay, let's say you're trading this run into the downside i'll be doing it on the one minute for the sake of it um if your initial position is right here after this stop run with smt um you want to be putting the bulk of your position on there and now if i were to look for a second position where i could add it would become this level right here so let's assume just for a second that i was risking one contract up here my position would look like this from this high. That's my stop loss or my invalidation. And let's assume I'm looking for the sell side here, which is quite a nice trade. But just logically speaking, this is the setup I'm looking for. If I now take a second position right here, what that does is that my position will drop to the midpoint between this entry and this entry. So you're essentially working with Let's see if I can draw this out somewhat decently. A position that starts there. So now your risk is doubled. You're working with two contracts and your position has went to this spot. And as the market trades in your favor, like such, um, you can begin to trail your stop, obviously, onto um, opposing PD arrays on swing highs and whatnot, and um, look for new confirmations into the downside to then trail more and every trailing opportunity is a position where you could be adding so long as it doesn't mess up your risk reward i believe this is a setup am took where he shorted up here and then he shorted another contract maybe more right there and drove it down into the sell side below here that's how i would position in expansions we've got a beautiful example of that last thursday let me see if i can find that devil so right here for instance you could be short um, off of this confirmation and then from there on out you want to see anything that the market trades into such as let's say this gap um, that provides a means of uh, shorting more now this personally for me would be a bit too deep uh, to take an entry on if i was scaled in from up here because you're dragging your average fill price really deep um, but after a confirmation it's generally a decent thing to do because you can scale large into a position without adding too much risk and covering your stop as you're trailing it down and riding it into the downside. That's the way to do it. Okay, how do you choose which PD array for value gap to depend on in case where there are about three for value gaps form? I don't, I make my life easy. I only use order blocks. I don't use any other PD array because it removes a lot of the open-ended stuff. I don't use breakers, I don't use uh, for value gaps, I don't use mitigation blocks it's i don't use inversion fair value gaps whatever whatever you can come up with it removes a lot of the um i don't know i'm not even sure what word i should use for that but anything that's open-ended anything that's uncertain that can cause complications in your trading um i would just completely eliminate you can make more than enough progress you know uh singling down on one simple concept rather than working with all of them 
So when waiting for a trade in the higher time frame, there's going to be highs and lows. Do we wait for reaction to candle closes before going down to lower time frame or with the immediate reaction from that higher time frame we do down to the lower time frames? So if you're trading off of a established higher time frame narrative, let me show you what that looks like. Um, so like for instance right here, um, this day right here, you get a 15 minute confirmation, even a 30 maybe even hourly let's see if that's the case or if it's too far gone by then okay it's a sort of gone but not too far gone um, on days like this you work with a higher time frame confirmation and there's still like a lot of breathing room to trade into the downside like such right if you let's say you're looking for the daily open here which was a logical target a lot of people took that um, you can work with the hourly confirmation and then go into the lower time frames to frame that entry and now if we compare this specific setup with um, this day, you have absolutely no breathing room for that, right? So for you to get a higher time frame confirmation such as the hourly, it's quite deep in the range. And then even on a 30 minute, which is why this setup failed, this was a setup I took myself, um, after you get the confirmation, you've already let price expand 250 handles from the high. And so on days like these, you have to work off of lower time frame confirmations, such as this sweep. And then you get a closure below. And then you can frame a continuation perhaps on these up close candles. So on days like this, you're gonna have to work with positioning yourself within here and look for a trade to the downside without higher time frame confirmation. It comes at the added risk of obviously not being as confident in the setup or not having as much um, how would you say weight behind it but it's still completely valid in that sense and can work for for most of the times it's the same logic sort of applied to this day um, the Wednesday reversal at the very least I would have confirmed it on the five minute by the time you get the 15 minute confirmation the markets already traded away from the lows a good 170 points and the drawn liquidity is just above here so for you to find something up this high in the range becomes less favorable into your target, um, especially if you're trading a higher time frame because the risk to reward would just not be feasible in any case. But um, if you work with a lower time frame confirmation, you can get the desired move where you're still entering in a relative discount, but you're taking on the extra risk of obviously working with a lower time frame confirmation, expecting it to uphold in the higher time frame trend. How do you know when you become a profitable? When you make money. <laughs> when you make money, that's how you know. When back to stream again, I'll try and find the time for it. I haven't been, uh, haven't been too available lately. Can we make a living out of trading in reality? Lol. Yes, probably. BK has a question. <laughs> Why did you show it the <laughs> So that you guys can long them, man. I'm just doing it for you, you know. Uh, may you please go through a potential trade that you might have taken during the course of the week? Uh, this is a trade I can go through this trade this is a trade that I took myself but it was it was outlined in my review section if there's a demand for that I'll bring it up but I think other than that this has pretty much been summed up I explained the logic for it on Wednesday already and I uh, executed off of it do you have signals group or live trade no and I will not unless you guys want to lose money do analysis in Dow Jones I'm sorry but I do not analyze Dow Jones I'm not interested in that market at all is this an ideal market to learn to trade? Uh, there's no such, you know, there's not really such a thing as an ideal market. Uh, you're just going to have to deal with the circumstances you've got. If it's hard right now, you're going to learn more than if it's easy. So I think I would take that as a positive. Um, very basic question. Can you recap s and I get there's a correlation between ES and Q, but don't get the relationship between buyers and sellers. Very basic recap, please. Sure. Check this out. Let's see. Um, let's put up e these two on the hourly chart. Okay, um, we use the logic of liquidity um, as a means of, how do you say, um, a belief system. I'll call it a belief system as to why and how we trade certain ideas, right? So um, with the understanding of liquidity, what SMT is, is essentially a crack in correlation between two directly correlated assets, whether they be inversely correlated or positively correlated. And so when you look at the, the ES right here and you look at the NASDAQ, 
we have the NASDAQ making a higher low, which is relatively stronger structure, whereas ES makes a lower low. What we derive from this is that ES is having a fake out, right? This is a false move. The point behind this move is to manipulate the sell stops below this low and then to expand into the upside where there are resting buy stops, right? So the simple part behind it is that SMT is one asset makes a move and the other asset makes an opposing move, which is showing that there's a crack in correlation. These two are supposed to always make the same. So like if ES makes a lower low, NASDAQ should make a lower low. That crack in correlation shows that one of the assets is bluffing, which is generally the one that manipulates and the true uh, so to say direction of the marketplace is into the upside and after you get that SMT you tend to see it followed by an expansion then what you can also notice is that due to ES's relative weakness because it took out this low NASDAQ meets the highs whereas ES doesn't and stays weak and heavy below the highs for the rest of the day so you can use that as well to gauge which asset is more likely to meet a target versus which is less likely I hope that makes sense the fractal model is the next candle model. You wait for 15 minutes to be engulfed when a high slash low is taken, and you look for a one minute change in state of delivery, OB entry. Okay. What we can expect in coming months? How will we behavior both forex and indices? I have no idea, man. I don't have a magic ball, I gotta be honest with you. But um just figure it out, you know, just trade. <laughs> there's there's no point in knowing what the market's gonna be like for the next couple of months. I mean, if it ends tomorrow, then it ends tomorrow. Just Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing day by day. That's as, as good as it goes. Is SMT only found on 15 minute? No, you find it on all time frames. It's going to be on every single time frame. You'll find it everywhere. The The higher the time frame, obviously, the more, um, let's say, the more weight you put on it as for higher time frame direction. But if you're a scalper or an intraday trader, so to say, um, you're putting the most weight on the 15 to hourly SMTs because those tend to be delaying the information for where the day is likely to trade towards or the week are you only trading nasdaq sometimes if i'm really desperate i'll, I'll use es but i try not to even when it's uh, stronger even when it's favorable i try not to trade the one minute charts not anymore no kiko when you look at the weekly can you say that the current close is closer to the high so basically next week is more probable to take that high than taking the low so next week should be bullish yeah technically so um but i still wouldn't go in with that sort of married idea um just you know the best or safest way to go about it is to just always wait for the opening days to trade on a new week's open um because a lot of things can happen right i'm pretty sure that a lot of people you know they also said okay we had a really strong close um last month and so therefore the next month should pump and they were bullish right out the gate on monday and then we got massive sell side delivery and closed really weak uh, near the weekly open so a lot of people get chopped up because they carry their belief from a hard time frame into the next week what a monthly chart indicates may take months to happen essentially right and so for a weekly chart it's the it's going to be the exact same thing i wouldn't carry a weekly close as a strong bias or confluence into my next week's bias um, for all I care, you know, it could also just do something like this. The week could just open, do that, and then just dump for the entire week. And then everyone who expected this to be strong is going to get um, wasted away because they married that idea. Uh, and it's the market's just going to do what the market's going to do, essentially. Is it safe to say that the FFVG in a displacement is the one that should be taken for entry? Uh, I'm not sure I understand that question. Do you ever use OTE? No. Can you tell T Trades to open a crypto payment gateway for market vents? Yeah, I'll ask him. Red, what's up? How come you change your system when you manage to make payouts, etc., with your old model? Um, because it wasn't consistent back then, and I got lucky a lot. I think that's what I had to realize is that um, I passed my first um, account within maybe two months of starting. And then I passed my top step within maybe four or five months of starting trading. And I was super ecstatic about it. And I thought I knew it all. And I thought I was the shit. And then I rushed and somehow managed to get a payout. And then 
bit by bit I started getting destroyed. Um, I mean, the, the biggest losing streak I've had was probably 12 or 13. So that's the sort of thing that starts to happen because there wasn't any consistency in the things that I was doing. It just happened to work at the time because it worked, but it wasn't a fixed model with proven results and proven outcomes. So now I've had to backtrack on that and restart and start to follow this strict process, which will guarantee the results. Um, but it's just going to have to take the time that it needs to take because whatever happened initially when I started was just, you know, BS and it wasn't supposed to happen that quickly. Uh, there's a nice saying. I'll, I'll post it later in my channel. I'm not supposed to be swearing on here. <laughs> um, do we wait for the correlating asset to take the swing high to define it as SMT? Yes, it has to. It has to, right? In order for an SMT to be there, we need to see a difference in correlation. Otherwise, it's just the markets are aligned and there's nothing to worry about. Do you typically enter off the five minute chart? Yeah, I think for the most part, it's five. I've been liking the three minute chart a lot lately as well. If it's a bit of a um, reversal day kind of setup, the three minute chart has been amazing. Um, but whenever I have the comfort and the time where the, let's say the 15 or 30 minute confirms a move, I usually just look for the five minute to, to frame an entry. Which entry you can use when entering a trade when you're using SMT? Any entry, pretty much. I mean, SMT is just a confluence tool. You're just using it to add on to your uh, current belief of where the marketplace is likely to trade toward. I'm still confused to spot which strong liquidity is valid. What time frame is the best spot which strong liquidity will be valid for the day? I think a lot of it comes by way of experience as well. So uh, you'll identify, like you'll, you'll start to, how do you say, you'll eventually develop a, an eye for things and you'll start to understand, okay, what, like this is a consolidation, this is an expansion, this is whatever, and where's the logical draw in that sort of range, right? So um, that's one aspect of it. But then other than that, I mean, the very, very easy thing to do is you just look at the daily chart and pretty much every single day will take the prior days higher, prior days low. So your first draw on liquidity always becomes the previous day's high and the previous day's low. That's your first measure of a very, very certain target to be met. If it's in line with your bias, that makes it even easier, right? And then from there on out, obviously I tell people, focus on daily highs and lows, focus on weekly highs and lows. Those are also important draws on liquidity, right? Previous week's high, right here. Previous week's low, right there was swept out. Here's we previous day's high, uh, week's high, previous week's low, previous week's low then inside week, then previous week's high into these highs. And then the last one would obviously be the session highs and lows. So you're looking at the prior day's kill zones. My favorite profile obviously being the New York reversal profile. Um, let's sketch this up on ES because it's a bit, okay, it's a bit ugly, but you're seeing London's liquidity resting above this high. You see Asia's liquidity resting above this high. And then you've got the PM session high right above this high. So the logical draws after a reversal would be into this buy side, this buy side, and this buy side, which we all tag on the NASDAQ. The reason I'm not taking NASDAQ here is because we made an SMT on Asia's high. So I'm looking at this right here for the draw on liquidity. And this is the PM session high, right? The buy side liquidity that formed during Tuesday's PM session. Do, 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 do. What time frame you use for strategy mostly? Um, five, yeah, just five. Do you have socials where you're posting content? I have an X account, yes, that's the one I use. I, I don't post um, education stuff though, I just post some of my uh, my trades. It's, it's not like a big education kind of thing. Say SMT is present, but no displacement has happened or moved. Now 10 minutes ago, still valid. When should that same SMT not be used? Um, there's no like, I wouldn't put an expiry date on SMT, but um, the SMT forms and then you're gonna wanna wait and see for a confirmation towards the other direction. Something that hints you at, okay, the market is ready to move into a phase of expansion. Uh, a lot of things, uh, something that you'll see a lot is that the market will enter a consolidation. And in order for the market to leave the consolidation, it will do something along the lines of this, sweeping out the high, creating an SMT, and then it may cultivate a small range, then a move lower, which is still inside the consolidation, then a retracement, and then really set the stage for an expansion, right? 
this breakout is trapping traders to buy long so this will trip them in and then close inside um, this consolidation tends to be a how do you say a a warning or something that would get impatient traders offside it'll push their patience so they'll start to get uh, impatient with this move and exit their positions then obviously you may see the move that moves lower within the consolidation a retracement to then finally expand out of it so the smt is not something that needs to result in a reaction immediately it's just something that you're going to look at and you're going to take into your structure considerations when trading the asset and expecting that if you are on side and your bias is correct and the smt agrees with what you're expecting you should see the move so to say come to fruition in the near future <sighs> Twitter. It is called Twitter. Okay, it's Twitter. Sorry. <laughs> Can you explain 930 setup? What do you mean by 930 setup? Um, what is your average risk reward per trade and what's your average profit you make each month? Um, there's no average profit or average risk reward per month, I'd say. It comes down to the month, right? Like, let me think. So, okay, for October, I've already found two trades. One was a win and one was a loss. Um, the month prior, September, I got maybe three trades total. And then those totaled for quite a decent amount of R. They were quite good trades. But um, there's no like fixed amount that I'm looking to make or I'm looking to get in R. I just take what the setup yields. Um, and if it yields more than usual, fine. And if it yields less, then that's just how it is. Used to think Kiko is the person in this profile pic. You wish. <laughs> It's three hundred k a month. How can I align higher time frame to lower time frame? You look for a higher time frame bullish structure, and then you go into your lower time frame and you fade any bearish moves. Setups in New York sessions after eight thirty manipulation, maybe. Um, I'm not sure what you mean, Alexander. Are you talking generally, or are you speaking a specific example? I'm quite confused at this stage. The daily swing formation, but the third day in the Asian session took previous day's high before it. So I can't determine what I should do with the London and New York stages. So, um, what day is that? That's JPY. So generally speaking, let me let me pull this up on my chart here. Just do JPY. There we go. Have a look at the day three. Where are we? So this is the example we're looking at, right? Um, right here, JPY sweeps out this high, breaks down lower, and then we sweep out this low and uh, come back inside. Right here is where I would not put on a trade at all until you see this. And this is where I would flip to the upside because what's happening here is that you've got protected highs right here and you've got a protection low, uh, protected low right there. So this day, if we now go into the hourly, which is the day that you see we have gotten chopped up, obviously there can be other conditions such as news and whatnot. Um, but if I see that Asia, oops, if I see that the market closes very close to the high, so like, where are we? This doesn't close, does it? So this is your daily candle. This is the low and this is the high. And then the next day opens and sweeps it out right away early during the day. I would generally always wait for more confirmation. So at this point, what you're looking at is we've got protected lows right there below the weekly open, and we've got a protected high up here. So instead of trying to pick your poison within this range from high to low, let's see if I can mark this out like such. Um, you're just gonna wanna wait and see until you can find an expansion away from it into the upside and then frame a move off of that, so to say because this is going to be indecisive in here. And I think after large range Monday, you could expect that too. Relative large range Monday. Let's see. When did this start, Unc? Am I late? Yes, you are late, AJ. Can 10 a.m. open be used as support resistance? Um, I'm going to say no, but technically, yeah. Um, I've used it like that before, but it's not it hasn't been as precise as other time openings would be. So like I find the 9.30 and 8.30 opening to be much more sensitive. That's something I would focus on more. Um, but yeah, 10 a.m. opening and 6 a.m. opening, they can be used for uh, 
for that purpose. Are there any specific conditions when you fade your bias and trade against it, or you just let the day go? Yeah, so um, let me see if I can show you an example. Let's go to the daily here. Here's a day where I faded my bias, um, which was this right here. Where are you, you beautiful demon? Here. So this Tuesday right here, um, I was initially looking at the downside. And this was a day where I faded my bias um, on one logic, and I'll be outlining that in a second. So let's draw up this low. Now, um, right here, what do we see? We take out PM session size. London makes the high of day. We get a bearish change in state of delivery. We get second stage uh, distribution or a confirmation. And um, what happens is that when you're not positioned prior to this move into the downside, you want to start to understand, okay, where's the market likely to trade to below this level? Now, if you find this level, right, this sell side right here, to be a logical point of reversal, meaning this is a point in time where the market can now go into a reversal stage, that's where I would fade my bias. If I don't see that being the case, so like let's say it was for instance um, just this low, let's say this low got swept, I wouldn't be trying to buy this higher because there's still these failure swings, these failure swings, and this failure swing. But when we trade into a logical level of reversal where the market has been trading off of a level of high resistance down into the downside and now finally met its draw right below here, that's where I would uh, actively or consciously look to trade the opposite way. That's the day where I did fade my bias. I was looking bearish uh, in the morning session. I didn't take the setup because I didn't have much faith in it and then I traded the upside instead. Um, framing the invalidation of the bearish bias because we've met our logical point of reversal. Um, let me show you an example where that doesn't work out, where you try to fade the trend and it just eats you alive. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, okay, maybe this works. Hmm. So like, okay, let's say this. This is Wednesday's high here, and this is Thursday, the day prior to non-farm payroll. You get this expansion up into this level, and then you get this down close candle and you get a close above. To me, I would never be looking to go long here because this is a point where I can expect the market to reverse off of previous day's high. So to fade that and you know stick with the bullish bias would be counterintuitive to the logic. Um, you can use the invalidation, meaning that after this happens, you can say, okay, I'm willing to trade the downside, understanding that this is as far as the market should go or can go, and it should break down lower. <clears throat> I'll show you where I also, <coughs> where that kind of thing also can fail. So like this day, for instance, um, I was framing these highs as I draw on liquidity for non-farm payroll. I wanted to see a strong close back inside. I found this to be a logical level of reversal. And after we took out this low right here, this is not a level where I would consider the market to bottom and trade higher necessarily. Um, if I'm looking all the way down here or maybe even to this low, there's breathing room on the downside. And like just this framework, right? I'm not talking this week specifically because I was wrong in that setup. But generally speaking, when you have this um, and then the market starts trading lower, it's like, okay, do I fade the understanding that this was a large range expansion and I'm working against a strong trend um, and try to trade my initial idea to the downside or do I let it go completely? This was a day where I would usually let it go, but I didn't. And it ended up obviously in a loss, uh, leaving all of this failure swings and low resistance liquidity here, which would have been a fine target for me because in my mind, if the market was gonna reverse from this high resistance high, which was to be expected to be protected, um, it would do so at this level, but not at any of these random lows. So that's sort of how you want to be filtering through that and picking out what you're looking for. If it's not at a level where you would expect the market to reverse, then it's not going to reverse. You just want to be sticking in that position. 
let's see. Oh my god, I missed a lot. Whew, I see. Thanks, Kiko. What are signs that New York nine thirty is a reversal of manipulation? If uh, if if London and Asia create failure swings, and we're trading against the higher time frame, you're always going to want to be fading that. So that's just how I like to characterize it. I've shared templates before on the New York reversal versus buy day um, profiles. It's as simple as that, right? When London dips into a discount array, maybe such as an old low, maybe Asia's low, maybe previous day's low, and then we get a strong close above the London range, you're expecting New York to expand. You're expecting a buy day, right? If London fails to do so and creates a failure swing, and perhaps Asia liquidity has not been met yet, and we're trading higher into a premium array um, during New York, and the market is inherently bearish on the higher time frame, you're going to want to be fading that bull trend, obviously, expecting New York to see the manipulation into reversal on the day. Are you a full-time trader? No, <laughs> I am not. <laughs> I'm a full-time chiller, though. <clears throat> I'm late. No worries. No worries. Wait, what do you guys want the link for? You can just see the screen, no? Am I crazy? Can you please explain DTDC? What is that? Like NASDAQ having 10 a.m. is for our open candle. And what is for our opening candle for Forex? As Garrett said, it's uh, an hour behind. And Garrett is my nice little moderator here today. <laughs> Example of your model. Um, I trade AM's foundation model right now. Few minor tweaks maybe, but pretty much 90% of it, I'm just following exactly his regimens. I took the same trade yesterday and still hanging in there. Oh, you you're, you're still in the you're still in the trade. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I hope you're not, man. I think that trade's invalid. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's still valid. Sorry, what is a protected low slash high? A protected higher low is a higher low that we do not expect the market to trade back to. What do you look for in the daily chart before you can frame a reversal? Okay, for me it's really simple. Maybe it's a bit more aggressive, but um. Well, obviously I'm looking for weekly logic, so I'm not looking for reversals just uh, blunt, you know, how you say, um, blatantly, but it's like right here we've got Friday's high swept by Monday high. I'm looking bearish. Right here we've got what was it, Monday's high swept by Tuesday. I'm looking bearish, right? We've got Thursday high swept by Friday. I'm looking bearish. We've got Monday sweeps out Friday high. I'm looking bearish. This is a very simple signature that you can just work with, right? The prior day sweeps into closes inside as a whole is already useful, but then comes obviously the underlying logic of we're following the weekly profile. So then it starts to be like Monday makes a high, Tuesday makes a lower high, Wednesday sweeps out Tuesday's low, Thursday expansion, Friday continuation, or Monday makes a low, Tuesday makes a lower low, Wednesday expansion higher, then Thursday expansion higher, Friday sweeps to Thursday's high, trades back into the range. So it's like you add those ideas into the weekly profile and it can yield you quite a lot of amazing trades within a week. Osak, yes, Osak, how? Um, oh, this, this thing is old, by the way, um, Mr. AJ. This is pretty old. This was for a breaker model that I used to trade. Um, I'll maybe update this. Yeah, I'll probably update this because I could fit my rules on a page now, pretty much. Let me get out of there. How do I? There we go. Kiko when Lambo, never. <laughs> uh, yeah, no problem, guys. My broker shut, so I couldn't close position. I'm hoping for a big gap. <laughs> You're doomed, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm using daily profile, which is more precise to you, either midnight open or daily open. So um, I don't use the midnight opening anymore. Um, I'm an advocate of it still. I still believe that it has validity and it works perfectly fine. Um, but the way I currently trade the daily open, so the actual daily opening price is more relevant to me. And so that's what I tend to use. I'm confused between liquidity, where to set targets, where to break even. You'll have to study that and backtest it. I couldn't put it into a short stream like this. Yo Kiko, does the lens models have videos within the WAP, which explains the model? 
I believe so now, yeah. Um, T has videos, I know that much. I believe AM is still uploading his, or he's already uploaded some of them, or the majority of them. Um, but there's videos accompanying all of the course content now that explain the certain aspects of the model. Yeah. <laughs> you want to suck me. Stop. Um, would you ever change up the model based on what you see on the day? No. Is the sound gone? Wait a minute. Sound. Gone. We're good? Okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't change my model ever based on anything on any day. There's never a day where I'm in the market and I get impatient and I feel like I need to put something on and then I just try something. It just doesn't happen. Like it's at this point, it's an impossibility. If it's there, if the model's there and the setup is there and the framework is right, I take it. And if it's not, then I close my laptop and I go about my day because that's how you stay consistent and build good habits. Daily opens at six, yes. You go gym slash workout, right? How did you start? What did you do which gave you motivation to keep going? Um, well, okay, for the gym, I, n I didn't really need motivation, I think, when I started. And then it became a habit. So, like, I started training um, maybe three years ago now or maybe three and a half years ago is when I began training for the first time. I just wanted to get in shape. And that was it. And then, it, like, I started to enjoy it a lot. I think the gym is quite enjoyable. And uh, since then, it's just sort of stuck, so to say don't need motivation when you're committed okay um 13 minutes let's get last round of questions and then i'll maybe sign off early i have to go pick some humans from an airport and deliver them to my estate yeah if i have sound issues you guys like tell me right away because that's something that happens quite frequently and it's annoying but we're just gonna have to live with it for the time being um, let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can plug myself <laughs> while I'm here. Wait a minute. Um, where is my section? Here we go. Here. Aha, free promo. This is my form of payment at this point. <laughs> oh, God. Rah. This is the X account for anyone wondering. TWX is streaming after Kiko, guys. Honestly, Garrett, you want to come in or what? Um, did you start when you was fighting? No, no, I did. Um, I just did gym. Like I just used to lift weights, and then I stopped because of an injury, and then I picked up again after that, and I went into uh, full time uh, Muay Thai, and then um, I took a break from that again, and then I had another injury, and now I'm just sort of cruising again back in the gym gym vibe. Friends visiting, family, yeah. My family's coming to visit. They live abroad, or well, I live abroad. Garrett, do you want to stream? You down to come on stage? Actually, if someone wants to come on stage and say something, actually, no, I'm not, I don't trust you because this is going to be uploaded and we're not supposed to be swearing. So if there's, if there's no other questions left, um, from my behalf, obviously, I'm open-ended to uh, calling it a day, but if there's anything else you'd like to cover, I'll get that done in the, in the shortest. Um, otherwise, obviously, I don't want to hold you guys up. It's Saturday. I understand uh, you're excited for the weekend. There's not a lot of focus or attention on anything. And uh, you know, have a fun time. Danny, I'm sorry I can't let you stream. But I promise that I'll, I'll see you one of those pre-market live streams. You missed the stream. You missed the war. Yeah. When will you update your Notion model rules, Unc? Should I remind you? You don't need to call me Unc, man. I'm 20. Um... Uh, I'll do it. I'll do it tomorrow. Maybe even today. I'll see what the time is like, but I'll try and get it done. Uh, it's much simpler now. My rules could fit on a. You could write it on on your hand, pretty much. You know. Quick question: When is the market open again? At six p.m. Eastern time, Sunday. How do you find your direction in the market, please? Um, it's a combination of things, right? It's always gonna be, the daily structure meaning where's the daily trading towards which level are we trading off of on the daily chart are we trading off of previous days high or previous days low then it's going to be the hourly structure for um, confirmations 
and for uh, direction as well as retracement targets, logical draws on liquidity, alongside the uh, alongside the higher time frame draws such as the daily levels and weekly levels, and then it all breaks down into then the five minute or fifteen minute where I'm looking for an opposing run against my higher time frame bias, and then um, potentially the stop hunt logic, perhaps an SMT and a framework for me to trade into the upside. That's the trick. The old notion model at like six picks. Yeah, because I was making things complicated, man. Uh, where do you find the notion link? I don't have a link for it, but it's just it's just posted in indices chat if you check the pin messages. But this is like an older thing. Thank you, Mr. Cope. Uh, <clears throat> we have news today at 10. <laughs> the market's closed today, brother. <laughs> Do you ever trade London? Yeah, um, I even trade Asia, <laughs> but it's uh, it's only uh, London is a session that I'll only trade on a position where the prior day, like for instance, this was a day if the if it was a bit cleaner Monday, I would have traded London and Tuesday uh, long. That would have been the logic. Um, Asia, I traded. When was that week where I traded Asia? I think it was. Uh, where are you? Here, this is where I traded Asia. This is also like another type of those setups where you can trade the Asian session because Monday manipulates these lows and then Monday has a change in structure. Uh, and the setup that I was looking for does not need to be met in New York. It was this right here. Oh my God, that's quite a stop. Um, stop loss was below there. And I believe I was targeting, where are you? Um, minus one of this leg. So this was the setup. This is like an Asia type of trade where you're framing this logic into the upside um, using prior day's confirmations. That's sort of the same day where I would take a London trade. But um, I wouldn't hop into London in the morning and just see what's going on and figure it out. How long have you been trading, Kiko? Um, 13 months and counting. I'll get ICT in this Discord if you let me stream next time. No, thank you. <laughs> um, Kiko, real question. My biggest struggle right now is for value gaps. When they're valid and when I'm supposed to be more careful. Because I feel like some one hour don't hold while some 15 minutes do hold. So it gets me angry. It's a very vague question. Um, do yourself a favor. Instead of buying the fair value gap naked on the higher time frame, wait for it to be respected. Wait for a clear signature that the market's done its part inside and is leaving it and then trade the upside um, if you go into my reviews chat and you look for um, maybe search internal i did a i did a short teaching on why i do not like trading the market when it's inside a higher time frame level of internal like such as a weekly buy side of balance um, you could see that happening this week if you look at the weekly here this right here is that weekly imbalance that I'm referencing. And now if we go into the one hour, you see how much time the market spends within this level. This for me is not a condition that I wanna be trading out of. You wanna trade it when you've certainly, so to say, identified that it's ready to leave this range and expand away from this level. Because as long as it's in this level, it's gonna be a bit choppy. Um, you don't want to be buying, you know, so to say, naked in here. You don't want to be trusting things too much. Much rather wait until it expands back out and then trade the following move. Um, if I go to the daily chart, I'll find you exactly where that example is from, right here. This is where I did the teaching. Uh, check uh, June. So right there, we spent one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine days inside this range and then the 10th day saw us close outside of it. I'm perfectly content with trading inside this range and trusting anything after we close above this high to trade higher. But being inside of there and trying to pick a market direction is not gonna do you any solid ever. And it applies obviously across all time frames. So like for instance here, let's say this is a 15 minute gap. You wait for a SMT on the one minute like this and then we close outside and then you can start trading it to the upside right here when we close above this gap. That's like a kind of logic you want to be using before you put on a position in these sort of situations. Order blocks remove a lot of that discrepancy. Uh, 
End the stream. I'm gonna watch a football match. LOL. Man, be my guest. You can go watch football right now. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop you. Um, what is Osok? Osok is a model where you are trying to capture the majority weekly range. You're looking for a sniper type of setup where you wait for the weekly profile to develop and then position yourself within the majority expansion of the weekly candle. It's more focused on low frequency and large range setups. Yes, that happened to me this week. I'm like, why are we inside the Feraliga for so long? Yeah. You just want to be waiting for a significant... You want to be looking for something that um, tips its hand to you that it would like to leave this level. Until then, you don't want to be messing with it because you'll get chopped up. Do you have a YouTube channel? No. Sorry. No YouTube channel for me. Never going to happen. Is for value got better for entry or breaker block? Up to your own um, backtesting and knowledge. There's no better or worse among all these things, right? I'm not going to say that one PD array is better than the other or one does this better than the other. It's just going to be a matter of what do you enjoy using and what works for you. And that's pretty much as far as that goes, at least in my eyes. I wouldn't put too much weight on it. Did someone record this? I did record this, yes. It will be uploaded. No worries. Because <laughs> it works for creating a mentorship. No! <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's not gonna happen. Foot and ball. You kick the ball. No, soccer has no meaning. Well, and I'm American, but Colombian, so American football is basically that, but it's called football. No. Football is American football. And soccer is when you kick the ball with your foot. I know that sounds very, very, how do you say? Um, what's the word again? Um, am I crazy? Have I lost my mind? What's, what's that thing? Backwards, okay, backwards could be a good word for it, but um, my hot take is that you should call football, where you're playing with the ball and kicking it with your feet, you should call it soccer, because it's just easier to differentiate that way. Okay, um, I think, ah, Kiko, what's the average trade duration for your OSOP trades? It's super strange, it varies generally three hours i think that's the sort of median especially from what i've seen in my back test like two hours 40. um but then it's like okay for instance the trade that i took on wednesday was let's see let's see how long i sat in there oh my god where did i just end up so wednesday's trade we were in the trade for how long some matter of time it wasn't the fastest thing let's get this um, date range got in so this was one hour um, but then my asia trade that i took two weeks prior must have been four hours no, 14 hours or something i held it for a long time uh where is it so it was something like where's that range thingy something like this maybe into there i got out like here i think okay so 13 hours and 30 minutes and then i got stopped out eventually over here so effectively that trade was 15 hours but that's like an overnight holding into new york so it's a bit of a different scenario for the majority of the time it'll be two to three hours for a trade i take We're going on your channel. It'll be uploaded on a different channel. You will see soon. It's a big surprise. Ha ha. Okay, cool. It's uh, 5.59, guys. It's been awesome. I'll see you all on Tuesday for the pre-market live stream. Wishing you guys a great weekend. And see you around. Bye-bye. This.